Hello. Wow, different background today. We're outdoors. Yes, because we don't want to be stuck doing like voting shit, right? Yes, we do. But before we do that, happy election day to all. We're going to talk about something very healthy and something that we can kind of dive a little bit deeper into. The concept of standing up for yourself. You know, a lot of girls, specifically, yeah, we're going to talk about girls today and, um, you know, facing challenges where we don't really know how to confront them or to stand up to people when you really feel like you wanted to say something but you didn't know how, well, we're going to talk about that. But we're going to talk about that through something very physical, very spiritual too, um, the concept of stand-up paddling and what that does to you in body and mind and soul and how it brings it deeper into life. So I've got two stand-up paddling chicks here, um, gorgeous, healthy, athletic, confident girls who will share their experiences talking about standing up for yourself. So welcome, welcome. All right, so we've got two. We've got Ashley and Leah. Why don't you guys both introduce yourselves a little bit and tell us a little about yourselves and why you do stand up paddling and what you do with it. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Um, yeah. My name is Ashley. I am the owner and instructor of One Balance Yoga and Wellness. And I also teach here on Oahu at Core Power Yoga, Hot Yoga Nimitz, and um, do some sup yoga teaching as well. Okay. Great. Uh, I'm Leah Vernon, and I'm the owner of Yoga Kai, stand-up paddleboard yoga here, and I also coach at a place called Kaya Fit Oahu, and uh, yeah. So you're both uh, sup gals, but before yes. we get to that, can we just talk about the voting thing quickly? Are you going <laughs> to vote today? I mean, this, this is a huge, huge historical deal, so we just have to lay it out. It's a, what it, it's a big deal. Yeah. I actually already did mine. I early oh, voted you did. on okay. Saturday. Yeah. All right. I didn't want to have to carry it with me until then. I yeah. Need to be done. Yeah. <laughs> You're glad you're done with it. No, oh, yeah. Are you going to say anything about it? Are you going to just hope for the best, or are you just assuming it's going to go the way it goes? Oh, I hope for the best. Yeah. I sincerely do. Yeah. I ha yeah. I feel very anxious <laughs> about this election. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's a scary time to be in our country, and I'm, I'm not looking forward to finding out the result. I think either way, I'm not going to be too pleased. Yeah. <laughs> so, I know. Just, I mean, I'm not excited about who could be the next president, which is an unfortunate feeling. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. How does that relate to us standing up for ourselves? What do you think in this particular election? It seems a little bit debilitating to me. <laughs> yeah. Because our thing is like standing up for ourselves yeah. is the right to vote, yeah, and we work right. so hard as women to have that. Um, and it's just really disheartening to have that power. Yeah, right. really I feel like you cannot out. do what you would wish. Right. It's like choosing the lesser of two evils, I think, yes. is right. something people Absolutely. keep saying throughout yeah. the election. Well, I think in life, a lot of times we're going to be facing obstacles where we don't really know what to do with it, but we have to choose, mm -hmm. you know? There's like, um, this is a Chinese metaphor about one foot on two boats, mm -hmm. and you got to choose, otherwise you're going to fall into the water. Right. And sometimes you just have to do that. So on that note, um, so stand-up paddling, it's an increasingly popular sport. Um, it's been, Leah, you were talking yeah. about that when I went to your class um, in California, and it's taken on by speed here. Mm -hmm. um, what are your, why, why stand-up paddling, first of all? What does it do to you? Why do you guys like it so much? I think for me, um, especially being somebody that doesn't surf or didn't have that experience of growing up just being in the water, it gives you a chance to really break away from the shore and get that same feeling of escaping everything and just kind of connecting with nature in a way that's, you know, mm. it's obtainable for people. Mm -hmm. So you don't surf? You haven't even No, I really? haven't. I know, I know. Well, I, I got pregnant pretty, like, right after I moved here, so. So you have, like, <laughs> two, right? I have you have two, two kids. Yeah, yeah. Three-year-old and a ten-month-old, so. Yeah, I was like, I'll just stay right here. <laughs> <laughs> Happy on a stable board. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ashley? Um, about the sup yoga? Yeah, why did you pick that up? Well, for me, it was about expanding upon my current yoga practice on the board and taking it out into the water. So um, I had spent several years practicing and teaching yoga within the studio environment. Right. And it's very nice and it's a controlled environment and it's safe and it, you know, has a lot of great things to offer, stability mm -hmm. as, you know, in regards to the foundation and all of that. Um, but for me, I really wanted to incorporate the parts of myself that are a nature lover and an outdoors person and an adventurist. And I wanted to mingle that with, you know, the stability and the security of the yoga that I had come to Mm. love so much as part of my life. Yeah. I think you mentioned the key word, stability, because the whole point of um, SUP yoga mm -hmm. is you're on unstable ground right. doing something that's supposed to be stabilizing. Yeah, not even ground. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not even on ground. Yeah. You take away the ground, take away the walls, you take away that safety yeah. net. And you yeah. Just, yeah. 
Why do you think that became a popular movement? Do you think it's something that people are just trending, or is there something really in the fact that you're trying to do something uh, so balancing on something so imbalanced? I mean, is that kind of like, like who started this? How did it all start? Um, I feel like, I just have to say, I think social media has really created this spark and this interest. People, people have a yoga practice, and they're like, mm -hmm. wow, wow, like, I want to be able to do that. I want to experience that. So being able to see, um, I really think, don't you think Rachel, Rachel Braven, Braven, for, for sure, sure. Uh, yoga for girl, sure. yeah, mm -hmm. she was like the first one anyone ever saw, like, on a boga yoga board, and mm -hmm. that blue board just mm -hmm. became mm -hmm. a staple for all of us to start our practice. Absolutely. Uh -huh. And um, then it just became super saturated in California, but definitely Aruba, California. Mm -hmm. And then know, everything cool starts in California. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. no. Right. Hawaii is a very cool place yeah, that yeah, people yeah. are following, too. Right. But do you think it attracts more people who are water lovers who want to kind of add that yoga practice into the water or pe the other way around, people who I are yoga the people? the latter is more my experience anyway. I, I don't know. I think just with the few years that I've been teaching regularly here, I get people that have never even done yoga. And it's, I think really people are just, they see something, they're in Hawaii, they're like, well, why not? Let's just go for it. Right, so. right. Like the class, I, I, I <laughs> took, I'm going to little, share a little experience. Um, so Leah took a show, I joined one of her classes last week. And so it's an interesting group because yeah. one <laughs> lady was older than me. I thought I was going to be the way oldest there. And she, because she's an empty nester, um, she decided visiting in Hawaii, she decided to go and do something on her, uh, check off a bucket list of doing stand-up yoga. And she's never been on a paddle. No. Yeah. She doesn't swim. So uh, cool. I don't think she was a swimmer. She, no. Yeah. And <laughs> then we had basic someone yoga. who was pregnant. And, right. And then we had an older gentleman and somebody who's never done yoga or sup, anything. So really, I mean, every class you get is just this crazy blend of people. Which goes to show, it really brings in all walks of yes, life. Yes, exactly. So it's not just like the athletic type who want right. to you know, do something. Right. Do you think that's the yoga practice on the board? How different, how different is that from yoga in the studio? What are the main differences and challenges? I feel like it's a world apart. Yeah, it's, it it's really like is. like it's, it's completely different. Yeah. How would you distinguish? Well, all the elements, of course, are there in a studio. It's a controlled environment. Typically, the heat, the humidity, the lighting, the ambiance, the sound, everything right. in there is controlled. Right. And, and especially being in Hawaii, it's not like California where I've taught where you're in cold water and you yeah. go 10 yards from shore and no one's out there. In mm -hmm. Hawaii, you've got people swimming, you've yeah. got fishermen, you've got other companies, other groups on the water. I tell you, even a pose like that, I was just, just like a normal stretch pose, right, right? In, in, in a hot studio, but on water, like I think you're guiding me is if you bend back a little more, right. you're going to fall in. If you mm -hmm. op open the hips up, yeah, you got to keep them square to the board. So that's another thing about SEP is that the board demands your attention and your alignment. Like on a mat, you could be in a huge class and the instructor may not notice that you, they're like, oh, you're in the pose, but they don't see that your alignment's off. Right. But if you're teaching a sub yoga class, you hear yeah. a splash and you're like, oh yeah. <laughs> right. It's kind of funny. <laughs> From time to time, you can hear this, <laughs> and somebody fell in. Yeah. But do you think there's a danger of people not allowing themselves to fully extend their positions because of that fear of the water and the imbalance of falling in? I feel like that same fear runs risk on a mat if somebody is hmm. nervous or right. holding back, and it's just a matter of time and practice until they allow themselves to become comfortable to find that. in the environment, whatever the environment is. Right. And that's yeah. part of the practice is facing mm -hmm. that inner dialogue mm -hmm. and yeah. pushing yourself past those boundaries and those roadblocks that you've set for yourself. Well, that sounds like the natural metaphor to go, the, the step into what we're talking about, standing up for yourself, is how do you face these roadblocks in life? I mean, yeah. do, do you see that? I mean, do you see those kind of different levels of challenging yourself um, using Santa Petal as a metaphor? What do you think? In Absolutely. terms of this? Yeah. yeah, so how, I mean, do you think Santa Paddling has actually helped you to kind of look at life a little differently? Really? Okay, so you have such a conviction <laughs> in your face. Yeah, I feel, I mean, I feel like this is one of those things that began as something that I saw somebody doing yeah, in a yeah. land far away that I had never even conceived of. And I was like, whoa, this is a thing yes. <laughs> that, I said, uh, that really? people yeah, can yeah. do. I, yep. Yeah, and then it takes a lot of guts and courage and fear working through and all the things to 
get yourself to a point, I mean, yeah. where you're running your own business, yeah. teaching people how to yeah. do something that once upon a time, you, your mind was blown that it was right. even being done ever. Right. I yeah. mean, did you ever even fathom that you'd be teaching or having a business doing this when you were, I don't know, a few years ago? No. I no. laugh. I, my husband and I say this every day. I was like, I'm my job is to teach yoga on a paddleboard in Hawaii. Like, how cool is that? It's, it's pretty, pretty unbelievable. Pretty unbelievable. Yeah. 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 And you having kids, what do you, how do you think you're going to, um, you know, teach them to embrace the water and, and balance their lives with both water and land and everything? Well, that is just a loaded question. <laughs> 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 Gotta like, uh, oh. trial and error. Yeah. That's my parenting yeah. style. No, um, I just think I want them to have confidence in themselves and faith in themselves and start at a young age with their breath work and just giving them opportunities to feel confident that they can make a decision. And if they see something, I just want to be able to be there to create like an outline for them to be able to obtain that. Like, okay, if you're interested in this, let's start slow. Let me help you take it step by step. Mm. Yeah. And do you think it's ever not too young to start them in, in the water, on, on the paddle? I think the younger the better. Like my son, I think as soon as he could wear a life jacket, I put him on a board. So he was probably 13 months old. So my daughter, she's 10 months. I'm like almost there. We'll be able to do like a little paddle out probably for her first birthday. But um, again, that comes with me having confidence in myself. Ah. And I'm not going to put them in a, obviously a dangerous situation. But yeah, get them out there young so they don't have that mental block. Right. And confidence is something that is kind of developed as you go grow up. And there are right. things that kind of give you or take away that confidence growing up. What do you think are some things that stand up paddling can help to create or to help de develop that confidence? I would say largely getting over making mistakes. Yes. So like it's okay to fall in kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, exactly. That expectation you have to be perfect. Yes. That's what really hinders people. Mm -hmm. It's like, yes. let that go. <laughs> and sup right. yoga keeps you very honest. I mean, when you're huh. in a class surrounded by 30 other people and you're on a mat, if you're, as you mentioned, if your alignment's off or if you miss a beat or whatever it is, probably nobody's going to notice. But right. in the water, your ego takes a much bigger hit oh, when yeah. you make That's mistakes. You are yeah. wet and you're, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're off your board and it's just like, that, that was me. There's no hiding it when you yeah. make a mistake. And what's nice about it, and especially in Hawaii when we have such wonderful conditions that it's rarely a, a bad thing right. to end up in the water. Right in California, it was a little bit different. Yeah. In the bay, it was not fun. But, no, it's really but here, cool. it's just kind of like, it's really just your ego that you have to get over. You're just ah. wetter. And yeah. you know, like yeah. that's really yeah. all it is. And yeah. if you can learn to get over that and be like, "Oops, yeah. first prize for me, like blue ribbon, first mistake made, I right. win," then like it turns every you know every mishap. I don't even want to call it a failure because it's just part of learning and right. growing. And you know, you, if you can learn that on the sub board, then it makes the the challenges off your board in your life a little bit more. So learn to get wet a little, little bit. Learn to fall. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's part. It's part of the process. You have to. You I know? almost wish I allowed myself to fall in class. You didn't. I did. I know. Oh, I should, you you should, should just make there. everyone <laughs> fall in once. I was going to say some instructors will have everybody just jump off and like fall yeah. in and get it over mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. But because yeah. when I did my um, headstand. I, I can do it in the studio, but yes. because of that mm -hmm. fear element, yes. I, right. I wasn't allowing myself to put my feet all the way up. Um, and I knew with that fear, I would fall would in. Fall. And yes. the fear sure. of falling prevented me from achieving my right. ultimate. Yes. And like I said in class, yes. I was like, you have to actually visualize it. So especially since you are new to sup yoga, people can't visualize themselves doing it. Mm -hmm. So immediately their mind isn't committed to the actual to executing that pose. Isn't that crazy how the mind kind of yes, controls yes. everything? Everything. Absolutely. Everything. <laughs> so there's no excuse, you know. So let's take a quick break. Uh, think about what you want to do in life and, you know, you can do it. Uh, we're going to come back and we'll talk about standing up for yourself, so don't go away. Hey, how you doing? Uh, welcome to Abachi Talk. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm your co-host. And we have a nice program here every Friday at 1 o'clock uh, on Think Tech Studios where we talk about technology and we have a little bit of fun with it. So join us if you can. Thanks. Aloha. Thank you for watching Think Tech. I'm Grace Chang, the new host for Global Connections. You can find me here live every Thursday at 1 p.m. where we'll be talking to people around the islands or visiting the islands who are connected in various aspects of global affairs. So please tune in 
and aloha, and thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham with Think Tech Hawaii, and I'd like to ask you to come watch my show, The Economy in You, each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Back on talking about something and how you can stand up for yourselves as a person, as a female, uh, or as a male, just standing up for yourself. I mean, a lot of people really take for granted that uh, there is a lot to do with how you feel about yourself in overcoming obstacles. So I've got Ashley and Lee here, um, tremendous yoga supping people. <laughs> <laughs> so how does that relate to you in your personal lives in um, ch being challenged with literally being on shaky water or being on ground but feeling you're in the shaky grounds anyway? Does it like your work? Yeah, um, so what comes to mind first yeah. is um, my last real job, if you would. <laughs> oh. And I had worked for a long time wait, 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 to get this sorry, job. Sorry, I can't take that. It's <laughs> not, what's a real job? What? So sitting in an office is a real job and teaching yoga is not, right? That's that is what, not acceptable. A grown up job? A grown up a job, a job. corporate job? A corporate job? A yeah. boring yeah. job. A boring job. <laughs> it was pretty boring. Okay. Yeah. Um, my last in a box okay. cookie cutter what I used to define okay. as a real job um, I had been living in Costa Rica for a few years wow. straight out of college I majored in Spanish and cool. I perfected it down there and then I came back to the United States and I worked for a little while um, with California closets but was really trying to get a job that would allow me to use my skills because right. I felt like oh, I'm super good at this and I worked so hard and I want to be this you know image of a young professional woman and support myself and feel like I am, I don't know, valuable. Right. Um, and so I got this job at the, the venture capital arm of the second largest bank in Spain. And um, we had our little office, not we had our big huge office um, in San Francisco. And I was there for about six months. And I was so elated when I got this position because I really felt like it was the culmination of all my hard work and my dreams were coming true. And and then within that six months time, I just became to feel so very unseen and unappreciated and undervalued to a degree that was really effect affecting my self-esteem. Why? Because it was a man's world there? Well, or? very much so, yes. I mean, banking and finance and all right. of these things, typically, yes, very much um, male-centered. But in my particular office, I was the only woman in this office. Oh. It was me and five middle-aged men. Um, and it got to the point where, you know, I would come into work some days and one of them would have thrown his jacket over my chair and I'll be like, oh, is this your jacket? And be like, yeah, just go hang it up. And it was just like... That's pretty pathetic that today it still was, have that It was, and it hurt, yeah. you know, because I felt like, why did I spend all yeah. those years and all this money educating right. myself <laughs> yeah. to get myself here and to have you tell me to hang up your jacket first thing in the morning? and that. Anything? I just started looking for another job. <laughs> oh, okay. like I was like, and I'm done with that. Because, um, you know, I felt I felt like I didn't have room to say he was still higher up than me. He was my boss, you know? Like, yeah. I felt like everybody there was my boss, basically. Right. Um, so, anyway, um, and this is the time in my life where I felt like I need to make a massive change. I need to completely change the way that I'm looking at things and mm. doing things in life and get myself out of this situation where yeah. I feel so powerless, right. regardless of how much I feel like I have to offer. Yeah. Um, and that's when I decided to become a yoga instructor. Um, and I, I really, and, and largely, it, it's what got me here to Hawaii as okay. well. And um, becoming a yoga instructor has taken me from that environment and placed me in a community of people who see me as a leader mm. and who encourage me to grow and to challenge myself and it's just a completely different environment to right. be in um, and it's changed my life to a huge degree like I feel like that move to be like this does this is not okay with me yeah I deserve more than this yeah. I'm better than this and to decide to you know turn away from that and turn to my passions and what gets me excited and what you know what yeah. I feel like but if you didn't have that situation of that kind of a challenge, you may not have found your I don't think space, I would have, right? honestly, because I was prepared to settle there forever. I was like, I'm good. I'm making more money than I ever have. You know, I'm, 
Do you think a lot of people settle? Most people oh settle? Oh, God. I, I yeah. think yes, Absolutely. most. Largely, yes. Yeah, and sure. what, what's the equivalent of settling if you're like in yoga? Like just kind of haphazardly doing a pose without f with full intention and integrity? Do you think people kind of deliver that too? That effort? I mean, I think that. Do you have. I feel like I've been. I mean, you guys see a lot of different types of students and how they, you know, yes. kind of translate. Right. I feel like that just students you can just see what they're going through in their personal mm -hmm. life and their mm -hmm. health by how they come into a pose so not even holding them to a standard of where they should go into the pose but just analyzing how they are in that pose and then just trying to coach them and guide them to open up or let go in certain areas i guess yeah but sometimes i think people aren't aware yeah i, I heard from a psychologist one time that you know if you're not balanced um emotionally you do any balancing poses, you can't do it. Yeah, it's exactly. amazing mm -hmm. how it kind of translates physically. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, and like we talked about in our class, just yeah. a lot of emotional blockages are stored in the hips. So people have ah. super tight hips, yeah. or if you work a desk job, just like like the posture mm -hmm. and tightness and stiffness in the back, right. and the breath. You can tell a lot about somebody by the breath. It's yes. like are they breathing soft, shallow? Do they even know how to find their breath? Or you know, that's like I think the, the key is finding the breath. Right. Mm -hmm. So, Leah, what about your personal life and how you found your way? Did you have any kind of experiences where you really needed to f stand up for yourself? Yeah, that, Yoga Kai, that's just the perfect example of standing up for myself. Um, I married my husband, military spouse, so I went from making decisions about my life to committing to his life mm. and found out we were moving here and just was starting my yoga teaching journey. I had been a coach for many years and just was kind of switching lanes and I got here and I reached out to many studios in Kailua where I was living and just like, I just, I'll clean your floors, I'll teach for free, you guys have moms that need help with babysitting, I just wanted to be a part of a community and not even, I don't want to say any names, but mm -hmm. it's like, mm -hmm. okay, not even the YMCA would give me a shot to teach mm -hmm. and I'm like, Aww. okay, but I just knew that I had some, it was like my dharma, like this was my, this is what I needed to do mm -hmm. and uh, my husband was like, I, you love the water, and I showed him pictures on Pinterest, of people doing headstands on paddle boards, and he's like, this is a thing, you should go, you should get oh. certified, and I came back, and there was only a few companies, and it was really just individuals teaching, and he was like, let's, let's do this, let's build it, and so just, I went through so much, the design process, and just trying to create an opportunity for myself, so that I could share what I wanted to do, but then from day one, the minute I got to the beach, and lay down a yoga board. Someone approached me and started like getting just kind of muscled at the beach park and on the water and I had no idea the politics or what I just stepped into. Huh. I was like, I just want to do yoga. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't understand. I'm not trying to feel this competition. I don't like the, the ego. I'm trying to dial that down. Right. So from day one, it's every day I get there, I'm constantly just standing up for myself and huh. it's just, the way it is. <laughs> but it is. I mean, going back to and politics, it, yeah. is there are so many challenges around you. You want to do your thing, but there's all this, you know, unstable kind of water drifting, yeah. and you need to drift, and you need to find a way to anchor yourself mm -hmm. exactly in that environment that you've chosen, yes. right? So um, I was talking, I was asking Zuri in our panel whether she's done supping and she never has, right Zuri? Uh, Which is time to do it and try. I guess I'll try it someday. Come out. <laughs> <laughs> try it someday. Your excuse is that um, you don't have enough core. Now, yes. core is interesting, right? Because everything comes back to this, as, as women particularly. Yes. Everything is centered here. Uh. So is it our kind of concept of life where we need to kind of engage all their, our energies here, and how does that work with the supping too? I mean, if you don't have yeah. core, you can't do anything, right? But I, I agree, yes. But I also feel like as a woman, it's like that's kind of where like body shaming goes straight to like your core, or ah. where you carry the weight is like the belly and the hips, and then. But it's like that's where you carry your children. It's like you you give them life from here, you hold them here. So I feel like what we need to do is to not be afraid of how weak it is but work on strengthening it because that is the foundation of our body of our breath like bravo yeah yeah well said <laughs> Ashley, can you really add to that i agree absolutely yeah. um i feel like the core gets a lot of attention whether yes. it be positive <laughs> negative yeah. or other right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um yeah. but that being said i do feel like it it is the core of a strong practice um, and strengthening it has 
limitless benefits. So it's not an excuse that you don't have right. core. You can just strengthen it. And I mean, yeah. I liken this to if somebody says, you know, I don't have enough core for sup yoga or I'm not flexible enough to do right. yoga. And I'm like, right. that is like saying you're too dirty to take a bath. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. We're here That's for you. Great. This is why you That's do the, the thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is the point. Just modify. Modify, build a foundation, you know, and just build upon that. Mm -hmm. But again, does it go back to the fear to even start to address God, yes, the fear, the self-doubt. The fear, I think that's, yeah, just self-doubt. It's mm -hmm. that inner dialogue that we talk about. Mm -hmm. So you are putting up those mental blocks. Yeah. For whatever reason. Them. Usually it's just insecurity. You're afraid of, I think so. it's the ego. Mm -hmm. You're afraid of what you're going to look like. You're going to, you're, again, it's that expectation of being perfect. Yeah. You know, going back to the lady who's traveling here who said she wanted to put this on her bucket list, her husband yeah. was there. Yeah. And I asked why he didn't want to do it. And he says, oh, I don't like yoga. It doesn't do it for me. You know, you hear yeah. that a lot from people who are athletic or, you know, claim to be. And they don't want to do it. Maybe it is like a fear mm -hmm. of embarrassing themselves because mm -hmm. it's actually something more challenging than they right. realize. But they always say, oh, yeah, it's not, it's not challenging enough. I don't get yeah. it. But is it the yeah. state of mind? <laughs> uh, is it how people approach the concept of yoga and yes. stepping? I think people also, it depends on like the relationship you have with yourself, but also a lot of people that are more like athletic, like what you're saying, um, their dosha type is more pitta, more fire, so they're okay. not really understanding how to balance their dosha. So they're, I mean, for me, it's like that was me too, so I'm going to do the opposite of that to keep myself in balance. Does that oh, make sense? Yes, yeah, absolutely. So if you're just so used to feeding the fire, feeding the fire. You need both. Yeah, you need both. Otherwise, you're going to get hit yeah. that burnout point in your life. Right. Well, at this point, can you know, our little short time left, can you maybe address our um, listeners and audience um, little tips for embracing and, and tackling challenges in life uh, and, you know, with your experience with the supping? Go ahead, Ashley. Yeah, thank you. Um, I would just say don't take yourself so seriously. Don't take yoga so seriously. And to a certain degree, don't take life so seriously. You know, very, very rarely are things life and death and, you know, as big a deal as we tend to make them mm -hmm. in our minds, both right. on the boards and in our lives. Yes. And I do feel like our ego and our self-doubts and that fear of not meeting the image standards that we want to be can hold us back on Absolutely. a lot of different levels. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's sad, you know, and it's mm. not necessary. And I feel like the more willing we can become to make mistakes and to be silly or, yes. you know, whatever it is, to get outside of your comfort zone in whatever, in whatever way, um, the more happy, you know, and free we can all yeah. be to explore different facets of life and, yeah. you know. Maybe we yeah. should have Fitness a silly and yoga day. It's just to be really on I'm down. Poses. <laughs> silly yeah. all day. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I'll just say, for me, I think the most important thing would be not to live in the past, the future, and to really focus on building a relationship with yourself. Because a lot of times, what you think you want your life to be like, or what you think you should be, is really, it's just the ego talking. Mm. So learning how to listen to your body, connect with your breath, and having that foundation so that you're not as rattled from the constant yeah. change of life. Right, mm -hmm. right. Wow, there's a lot to take in today. Um, so uh, first I want to thank you both for bringing such big thoughts on, on, on a paddle and more. Um, so Leah, if you, if you want to check out um, a stand up paddling yoga, Leah has a company and the website is? It's yogakaipaddleyoga.com. Okay, and, and Ashley, you're starting your own uh, thing too with One Yes, Island. yes, um, I teach private yoga lessons here and then I'm also leading a retreat in big, on Big Island in cool. April that I'm really excited about. Okay. Um, and you can check out all about that at uh, onebalance.com. Okay, great. Well, thank you again and enjoy your water and your surroundings.